Hi, good afternoon, ladies. My name is Riddhi Parikh Mehta. I am uh, belong to an organization called Leadernomics. Uh, yeah, that's that's what we are. And welcome so much to this chat. Uh, Leadernomics is a leadership development organization. We work with organizations, individuals to develop leaders for the future. So we're here to talk about uh, women returning to work. We have a bunch of questions, but let me just put something out there first for us. Uh, you know, what does what does career mean to all of us, and what uh, you know, uh, what does it define for us? I think career is a part of us, a fairly integral part of us, but uh, yet indeed a part of us, and uh, not our whole selves. I think uh, I think that's that's the first thing that we should all remember. It's uh, it, 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 it's critical for us because it provides various elements, whether it's a sense of satisfaction, a sense of purpose and meaning to our lives. It also provides uh, livelihood, it provides us camaraderie, it provides us a social environment in which we get with, uh, together with each other. So career is not in isolation about chasing the next promotion, chasing the next increment, finding the next job. No, it's not that. I think it's a more holistic piece uh, which is there with, for us. And when you find your career, keep that in perspective. It's a part of you, an integral part of you, providing various elements to you. And yet your identity is beyond that. It's beyond the roles that we define for ourselves. Um, careers bring to us a... a also, a set of challenges, everything from, uh, you know, do we know how to do our jobs right? Do we know how to deliver? Is there pressure? Uh, how do I deliver against the pressure? So it brings us, you know, all, all of those elements as well. Uh, it also brings us an opportunity to showcase our strengths, which is why to choose the right career, it's critical that we play to our strengths, play to our interest areas. So the studies, the degrees, the graduation, the post-graduation, the PhD, you know, you know, certifications, all of that determine what career we choose. And then beyond that, uh, we find an area which we truly and passionately believe about. Uh, I work in the field I work in because I love working with people to see that there is a huge potential in each one of us to get the best out of us. So at Leadernomics, we work with individuals for their organizations, but we work with them so that they can bring out the best in them. And, and that gives me immense satisfaction. It gives me the rest of the stuff of camaraderie, friends, money, and so on. But it gives me the sense of fulfillment as well. And that's the right way to move about your career. I'm going to pause a bit, look at a couple of questions, and come back to some more of my thoughts. Mm. So the first question we have over here is from Hamida. It says, I graduated in BBM. I've done my master's in commerce. It's over a year and a half and fresher and I'm not employed. And what should I do and where can I apply? Um, Hamida, what you would need, want to do is find the kind of company that you'd want to work at. And when I say the kind of company, it includes what's the product or the business that they are in. If it's a product that does not connect with you or resonate with you, or you don't believe in it, you will not be able to do 100% there. So first, find the place that you truly believe in their product and what they're offering to their customers. Second, look at their culture. Is that the culture that you want to work in? Do you like it? Is it, is it fiesty and aggressive enough that you want to be a part of it? Or you find it, no, that's not what I want to do. You know, I want something where there is more bonhomie, where there is, uh, opportunities to collaborate a lot more. Is that the kind of place you want? So that, that's another choice. So look at the different parameters of culture of an organization because we spend more waking time with our work, workplace colleagues than we spend at times with our family. So uh, on an average day, you're spending eight to 10 hours in office with your colleagues. It's, it's important that the environment that you're in resonates with you. Uh, whether you're a fresher, or otherwise, let me tell you, when I started working after my post-graduation, I was a fresher. I didn't have a day's work experience before that. And, and I think that worked to my advantage because I did not have any inhibitions in asking questions. I did not have any reservations on taking on any kinds of assignment that was put my way. So if you keep yourself open and you find the right workplace, that will be like the 
match made in heaven for you. It's not easy to find jobs. There are various elements that are needed. You need to go out network. You need to put your CV in the right place. You need to prepare yourself for an interview. You need to uh, research the industry. So all of that bit, your hard work also is required. My recommendation would be to find your interest area, find the kind of company that you want to work, work hard towards it and get the match made. Okay, um, Nikita says, I want to work from home. I have an eight month old baby. I worked as a teacher before I went on break. What do you think are the right choices uh, for me at that, at this time? Mm. Nikita, congratulations on the baby. I think parenting is a beautiful journey, a huge roller coaster, but a great journey to be on. So congratulations to uh, your family and you for the baby. Uh, being a teacher is, teaches you a lot of fundamental skills apart from the fact that you have the knowledge to teach your class it teaches you perseverance it teaches you uh, the ability to you know, work with different kinds of temperaments different skill levels of different students in a classroom so while you're at home perhaps when you put the baby down for a nap sit down with a sheet of paper put down all the skills that you know that you have built as a teacher basis those back to the same thing i said before which is of interest Check your interest levels. Do you like writing? You know, today content writing is a huge opportunity. Do you like teaching? Could you do, uh, there, are, there are so many uh, opportunities to teach online. You don't have to leave your house. Uh, there are lots of uh, organizations that want you to create content to teach online. And you've been a teacher, you know how to do that. So, uh, you know, that that is an opportunity. You could, uh, you know, do jobs around uh, uh, telemarketing, anything that does not need you to leave home if that's your priority. Of course, there are places you can leave your child at a safe daycare and go out to work, but if the priority is to be around, then these are several opportunities. The first thing would be to look inward and look at your strengths, and as a teacher, I'm sure you build immense strengths. Okay, um, so that's for Nikita. Mamta says, I was in sales for two and a half. I'm guessing it's two and a half years uh, and then I moved laterally to customer service it's still sales pacing I'm currently on a break I want to do business development when I return I'm feeling indecisive and pickle minded uh, I think as women we judge ourselves a whole lot okay and I don't think other people are concerned so much about us uh, I do that I'm guilty of it myself so I completely connect with you Mamta uh, Indecisiveness gives us the flexibility to stay open. Uh, there is a beautiful article, uh, and I'm sure there are many others. You can go to leadernomics.com, and there's actually a very simple infograph, and I like it. I call it a beautiful article because it's really short and quick. It talks about how we take a decision. Now, you could be a linear decision maker where you pick various factors that influence your decision, do a go, no go on each one, saying, do I want to be in sales? Yes. Do I want to do uh, sales, which is B2B, B2C. So you go through various parameters of your decision-making process. Go yes, so yes, no, make a flow chart and arrive at your decision. That's one way to decide. The other way to decide is a more intuitive style to decide where you say, I liked that piece. You know, when I was doing sales for uh, X kind of company, I enjoyed that. I got great success there. I was able to convert uh, the clients that I wanted to, I got great client feedback. That's the kind of place I want to be. And then you describe the place. So the place was B2B sales or was it B2C sales? The place was one, two, three, four kind of an industry. The place was some place that give you a lot of autonomy. So back to the first bit that I started off with, which is about also assess the culture of the company. What kind of place do you want to work in? What kind of environment do you want to work in? The names, the brands, the tags don't matter. It matters what you're going to like. So do some thinking around what kind of decision you want to do. Use one of the methods, either go very linear on decision making, go intuitive on decision making, go with your gut at the end of it, but take some steps to take a decision. If you feel that you are indecisive, once you've decided, go the entire way to implement it. So if you decide I'm going to get a job in this industry, this kind of a role, go all out to get yourself that. I'm sure you will. Try it out for some time, two years, three years later, you could always evaluate it again. So it's uh, it's not an end road, but you definitely need to go the full extent to know whether your decision works for you or not. Otherwise, you'll be in this indecisive space for a long time. So all the best to you for that, Mamta. 
Deepika, uh, even though I've pursued my education in commerce, uh, due to my parents' choices, my heart seems to steer towards art. What can I do now to bridge this gap? Are there courses or diplomas that I can take up? Sure, Deepika, there is ample that you can study. I think uh, from the times that I studied, which is several years ago to now, there is uh, immense opportunity to shift uh, you know, careers and you know, zoom in, zoom out between roles. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. You know, I was in human resources. I graduated from a premier HR institute uh, called Tata Institute of Social Sciences, a brilliant organization to lay foundation. Worked in human resources for several years uh, in great companies. I was in Johnson & Johnson for a long time and uh, Fairly, uh, you know, about I think 10 or, or years later, I moved to frontline sales. Now, that was a completely different shift and did not, uh, did not have any connection with human resources. But as a leader, there are fundamental elements on how is it that you approach your work. And those are the principles I use. There. So you want to move from commerce to arts, you can do that. You can go the route to do courses and diplomas. And I quite like that route. But I have to share with you something that I learned day before night when I met one of my professor, rather our dean from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, an extremely wise gentleman who spoke about how sometimes studies and schooling and colleging and university and so on can get very boxing and limited. So you have two routes to go. You can do courses and diplomas, or you can take up the job of your choice and learn on the go. Uh, several researchers will show us that learning happens maximum when we are on the job. 70% so of our learning happens when we are on the job. And if arts is the place where your calling is, define art, is it fine art, is it art with subjects like uh, economic psychology and so on. So define which one it is and uh, perhaps you, know, you work for some time, so perhaps make a shift. You could always do concurrent courses, diplomas. Uh, let that not be the reason for you not to make the shift. You can find courses online, I think it's one of the most effective ways to, to concurrent studies at some point in time. If you want to take a break from working and do a full time course, that's OK. You may want to start working first and then look at courses. Can you suggest some technical courses apart from Tally SQL, which is a requirement with my education and also are in trend? Uh, I think that's a follow up question from Hamida. So Hamida, we know that you've done BBM and commerce. Uh, you can do once again it would be about what's the kind of work that you want to do so uh, today technology courses have a huge amount of element everything from machine learning to artificial intelligence to robotics and there's no field where that can be uh, restricted so uh, all of those skills are important but merely to gather uh, multiple certificates would not be of help. So what I would recommend is define what you, what kind of career you want, and then identify which courses that you want to take. If it is accounting, uh, is a kind of job that you want to do, then yes, sure, tally SAP. Those are softwares that you will have to learn. Mm, you could do that when you start working as well. Uh, is is how I would recommend that. Okay. I'm going to just take some more questions. At the same time, I just want to talk about uh, the need to, you know, the need to focus on our skill building on a regular basis. Now, when you want to make the right career choice, you also need to be armed with the right uh, tools that that are there for you. So it's certifications, it's experiences, but it is the focus on continuous learning agility. And this phrase is borrowed from a very dear friend of mine. So she spoke of how she's building continuous learning agility in her team. And I thought it was extremely meaningful. And the learning can happen from various elements. If, if you follow me on LinkedIn, or if you follow the leadonomics.com portal, you'll see many of us write uh, about our lessons from Netflix shows, movie shows, uh, uh, I don't think learning needs to be restricted to going to an institute, but learning needs to come from our own need to learn. Learning opportunities are based on observations everywhere around. Go ahead, explore that and see what you can gather. It is also extremely important to periodically set time aside to reflect. Now, this is quiet time. Uh, you get up early in the morning, uh, you know, at 
maybe at six o'clock if your house starts at six thirty, at seven o'clock if your house you know starts at seven thirty, whatever. Get up in the morning, make yourself a cup of tea, coffee, or warm water, whatever be your beverage. Uh, sit down with it. Think of what's happened in the previous day, previous week. What are you looking forward to in the coming day? These pauses help us think about what are things that we want to learn. You know, I have a baby and I'm finding it difficult to work. And, I, and I've been through that. I quit working when my son was about nine, ten months and I had all support from my in-laws. And I think, I think I'm blessed with the kind of uh, folks I have around me, whether it's my parents, in-laws, husband, uh, siblings. I think uh, they all supported, but I was exhausted being a new mother and I was exhausted being a professional and I just needed to take time off. And I think uh, while, while the break was short, it was I think about five or seven months, it did me great good. But I had to take that decision for myself and saying, everybody you know, it seemed so contrary to what everyone was doing because everybody who had little children wanted to come back to work and me here with all the support I wanted to quit working. And, and I looked at myself uh, very negatively, I said, you know, you're being so wrong and look at all these other people who are trying so hard to work and you're giving up on yourself. And I said all those things to myself, which really didn't help me in any way. It made me feel worse about myself. And then at on quiet mornings like that, uh, in fairly sleep deprived state, many of us would be young mothers or had been young mothers at some time. We know the kind of early days of parenting. And in that sleep deprived state, I said, you know, if this is what I feel, and this is what I feel. If I feel that I need a break, I will take it. And I will see what happens then. Uh, the world was kind to me. I worked extremely hard and I'm back with a good career today. So it is important to reflect because that's when you make your right career choices. Otherwise, you keep running with the flow without realizing at what point in time are you burnt out? At what point in time do you not have identity around your own career? So those, those elements come in your way. So make time for active reflection, which is reflect, think, Take notes either on Evernote, on your phone or a paper pen or drawing art, whichever be your way of taking note. Take those notes and then compile those over a few days and then review that again. That will be an active way to reflect. So it's not just one time exercise, but daily is ideal. I don't manage to do that. Uh, try at least weekly. Uh, I think that, that that's what I am at, but uh, daily is great. If you can get to daily, five minutes, 10 minutes of reflection, uh, it would do wonders. I'm working towards it. If I get there, I would let all of you know in some other time and forum, but yes, that's the way to go. Okay, next question. I'm currently working with a company and I want to switch as my work-life balance is not good in this company. Plus the environment is becoming stressful. I'm looking for job opportunities in Bangalore. Uh, you are lucky, Kamakshi. Bangalore is a thriving hub of lots of industries, lots of job opportunities. I know work lives are stressful. And I think, I think stress needs to be looked at in a context. You know, Steve Jobs said, if you love your work, then you enjoy it. And if not, it feels like stress and burden. And uh, if, if that's what it feels like, then it is time to part ways with that workplace. Maybe another place would work uh, very well. However, what you need to know is, are you really sure there's a workplace which is sending out those stress signals uh, or the stress triggers? Mm, what do I mean by that? Uh, is, is the workplace causing the stress? Is the distance to the workplace causing the stress? Is the traffic in Bangalore? And I thought Mumbai, I'm from Mumbai, and I thought Mumbai was bad, but Bangalore's worst. Okay, is the traffic in Bangalore causing stress? So identify that so that when you choose your next job, should you stay back and stay back, but even if you choose the next job, you make sure that that is plugged. You know, you, if while right now you're feeling stressed, but part of the stress is the distance to the workplace and you can't come back home on time or you're spending more time on the road than doing productive work in office. You need to make sure that the next workplace is not landing you up in a similar situation. However, when you face stress, it's important to get out of the stress scenario. Stress releases the wrong hormones in our body. It deters us from effective performance. So identify the cause, the manager, the job, the workplace, culture, distance, um, you know, your frustrations, they need, you, you need to identify that. And once again, the active reflection would help you uh, identify those causes, it gives you that quiet time to, you know, look at what those causes are. So make sure your next job change, role change, or continuation also in this job plugs that stress point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anu. Anu says, I'm a fresher just out of college. I've done my arts major in journalism and mass communication. 
extremely noble uh, career to be in uh, journalism if uh, I know you can do justice to it and I'm sure you would what are the career choices that I have except the typical ones um, and today I, I believe that education gives us a cert certain starting platform it does not necessarily define our entire career so I like the one you know, the question that you put out saying I don't want the usual one can I look for something above and beyond. Uh, yes, today communication has become a completely unique field. There is social media, there is digital media. Today, TV watching habits have changed entirely. So let me again share a little bit from personal experience. It's been about three and a half, four years. We've not had cable TV at home because Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hotstar, uh, that's what we're watching. So, uh, you know, so life has evolved completely and uh, how you share news nuggets has changed the format has changed first video news sharing was only tv news channels today we know that these options are plenty mm, there are youtubers who create meaningful content from live news or real information that's taking place around us that's a career uh, there is a huge importance on you know how, what is the maturity with which journalists and media communicate what is the sensitivity with which they communicate that's another option uh, there are various options around can you do training for those people can you actually be delivering those news can you start a youtube channel can you start an institute of your own uh, for people to learn these things Th those are the kind of options that you can explore so your your degree would help you over there and then it opens up all related fields uh, and communication as, as an industry is exploding tremendously. We have a last couple of minutes. I'm going to do my best to answer almost all the questions. Uh, I, I, while, I, while the comments load, let me leave you with uh, some references also. Very young and since many of you are just finishing your graduation studies, there is a book called What Color Is My Parachute? This uh, it's, it's like a fat book uh, that I refer to when I was uh, finishing studies and it gives a beautiful framework to look at ourselves at the center and uh, the whole career element around us, uh, everything from the kind of workplace to the kind of career we want to build, the finances around it, the technology with which we want to work, how long do we wish to work and, and more. And the book is fairly descriptive. There is an associated workbook as well. And this, I'm not marketing or selling this book and I have no connection with them. I do not know what's in print over there right now. But I know the book was around since legacy. A friend of mine had introduced me to the book. And at various points in my career, I think for the first about six or seven years of my career, I used that book as a reference guide to go back to every time I, I wanted to take either a role change within the company or a job change outside the organization. And uh, I, I, that structured exercise has played a very foundation role for me. Now I have simplified that into you know, making just a two by two of pros and cons for every career or job option that I have. And I just say, okay, what are the pros for this? What are the cons? And I take my decision. But uh, What Color Is Your Parachute is uh, was a book that shaped my career decisions in early years. And I'm very happy to share if, yeah, if it uh, is of any use and benefit to anybody else. Okay, on that note, it's uh, time up for me. I, uh, I had a lot of fun interacting with all of you and all the very best for your career choices. Good luck, uh, good luck for 2020 and for times ahead. Thank you.